Hey, it's Don Copeland here today with the Compress IUV 600S. And we're going to do something a little different, all right? We're not going to print anything. We've already printed something. What we want to do is share a little bit and talk a little bit about, you know, where does this fit in into the marketplace? And probably the most common position that just kind of fits into it has historically been filled uh, by pad printing, also called tampo printing, right? It's just a process. It's, a, it's not like it's kind of light, but not really like screen printing. So we want to kind of take a, a real-world job and put it into a scenario and get an idea of what the cost differences, the time differences, and everything like that would be relative, right, to doing it digital versus doing it analog using pad printing. All right. For this situation, we're actually going to use some, uh, some golf balls that we printed before here on one of our earlier videos. And now this one, we, we did do it in process using the UV, but, you know, looking at this job, I'm going to bring one of these balls up here to you. This job actually can be done, all right, with five colors, all right? There are the four colors in the logo of Coldessi, and then there's the black for the names and the CD, all right? So this would be a job that could be pad printed, all right, and it would be pad printed. You would need at least a five color machine. I don't know of a lot of companies that make five color machines that they'll make two color, one color, two color, four color, six color, a lot like embroidery machines, all right? So what we, we're going to do is just compare this five color job. So we have 108 balls here. We're going to do a job, let's say a job for 600 pieces, five color golf balls, all right? And let's do some comparisons. So when you, when you go to print with pad printing, much like screen printing, or any other type of analog process like that, embroidery, digitizing, same concept. You divide your design into a finite number of colors. In this case, we would have five colors. And each one of those colors would need to have a screen burn for it, all right? Or, or in this case, what we're going to do is what's called a cliche. Cliche is a plate that they actually, you actually pick the ink up off, and you actually have to burn into that either through etching or through photo, photo etching a, a, a a hole for the ink to sit in. So we had to we had to print five films, all right, one representing each color. We would have to expose or etch five of these cliches, these plates. And, and you would generally, by the way, you would just expose them. You wouldn't etch these. You wouldn't etch these with a laser um, because you want to be able to just you know, throw them out. It's, it's like five or six dollars for the most part for a, a, a coded uh, cliche that you're going to be able to photo etch, all right? So those are five or six bucks. It's a lot more expensive for the metal. Now, they have much longer life when you do a metal, and a metal cliche may last you a hundred thousand impressions up to a million, right? The, the, the grades that they have of the photo etchable, they range anywhere from maybe 10 to 20,000 up to maybe 50, 80,000 before the quality deteriorates to the point that you're not being able to get the ink out, it wears down, okay? So we're gonna even assume that you're gonna go to the low end, which are about five bucks a piece for those cliches. So I've generated the five cliche, the films, all right? I'm now exposing the five of them. Easily this process is gonna take about an hour to do the five of them, all right? So we have $5 into each one of these cliches. We have, just say comfortably, a dollar a piece into each of the films, all right? So that's basically comes to $6 a color, all right? That's $30 for the, the films and the cliches. And we're gonna be very generous again and say $20 an hour for labor. Whether it's $20 an hour for labor, the operator of this material, this machine, or for the operator who's doing your, your exposure for your pad printing. Okay, so let's get this straight. Artwork had to be done, all right? Either way, we gotta do the artwork, it's gotta happen. You could make an argument that doing artwork for this, for a digital printer, is easier than doing artwork for a, a where you're gonna do separations, where you have to think about designing in spot colors, separating in spot colors, worry about trapping colors, because generally what you would do on a design like this, you would have a little bit of an outline of the colors bled out, and then the black would trap it to take care of any registration issues. So it actually would take longer to set up the artwork, but we're not even going to go into that. The artwork was done. We're an hour into this. I now have my five colors separated out. I'm loading them onto my exceptionally large pad printing machine because it's a five color, five colors on a six color machine. I did a bit of research on this. 
generally about as fast as anybody's going to claim for a, a four-color machine to do four colors of an impression onto the balls. You're going to get 600 an hour. So that's why we chose this number. All right. Literally, if you're doing five colors, it's probably going to be a little bit slower. But again, benefit of the doubt, we're going to say that you can knock out 600 of these in one hour, five color. Once your press is set up, your pad printer is set up to print. So we're done. We've done an hour of prep, right? $30 worth of materials with $20 worth of labor. So what's that come to? 50 bucks. We're $50 in already. Haven't printed a ball yet. All right. Now we're loading our machine up to get ready to go. And there's another thing we got to take into account. Whereas I can calculate exactly how much ink goes on each one of the balls that I print with a digital process, right? And in screen printing, you can even in some cases, like if you're doing screen printing on shirt, you can reclaim your inks, right? When you're pad printing, the cups that you use on your pad printer have to be filled a given amount for the press to even work, okay? General rule on the size cups, which most of these machines have, which is like a 90 millimeter, is that they're gonna to need to be about a third full which roughly translates into about 50 to 60 milliliters of, of ink. I mean, it's not six, of grams of ink, all right? Um, and that's just for them to operate. If you're going to print 600 balls, you have to have enough ink in there over those 600 balls to also cover that. So, but being conservative again, we're going to have to load up five cups with 60 grams of ink. When you do the math on it, basically what it comes to is that you're going to have about a quarter of a liter of ink total between those five cups in order to be able to make the machine operate and have enough ink to print this job, okay? We're just going to leave it at that because you really can't reclaim it. Depending on the ink you use, a lot of the inks are two parts. I mean, you add a basically an accelerant to get them to set up more quickly. So once you do it, you mix and go, you print, you're done. When you're done, you clean that cup out, you throw the ink out. It's not like you take the ink and put it back in the jar. It's just not something you do. So looking up Averaging out the price of the pad printing inks, let's call it 120 a liter is probably about the center point. They range from a low that I found of around 85 to 90 to a high of 160, $170 a liter. We'll pick 120 as a fair number. So I'm going to use a quarter of a liter at $120 a liter. That comes out to $30 again. It's taken an hour to print. There's another $20 for the labor. So let's see if we got this right. We have the materials to set up our separations, $30. An hour of labor, $20. 50 bucks, no balls printed. All right, load the machine up with ink, $30. All right, kind of like when you get your car fixed. You know, when you take your car in to get it fixed, it's $500 no matter what. It seems like there's a pattern here, right? And then an hour of labor to print. So two hours of time, $60 worth of materials, $40 worth of labor, it's $100. We're not even going to say anything at all about how much uh, time it's going to take to clean up the machine. My, my, speaking of machines, my machine's talking to me. I'm going to unplug the, uh, the WIM system now because we're not actually going to print. So that's the pad printing process. If you haven't experienced pad printing, now you have an idea of what it's about. There's other steps in there, cleaning out, making sure everything. But that was just the Reader's Digest version, realistic numbers of what it's going to take to print. And by the way, that's not on a, you know, $5,000 pad printer. That's on a $30,000 pad printer that's a six color machine. All right. It's also assuming that you had each of these spot colors. I knew you had the black, but we have some pretty wonky colors in here for our, some, they're, they're Pantones. I think we made up colors. Um, but that side effect, we're $100 in, two hours, we printed 600 balls. All right. Which is still sounds pretty good, right? You got $100 into the printing of 600 balls. So, you know, roughly in the area about 17 cents a ball to print, something like that, all right? So now, let's do the digital process. Using the Compress IUV 600S, we have a video, you can confirm this, and we actually printed these at what I would consider marginal quality. We went as fast as we could, maintaining the quality that we felt was acceptable. So again, I wanna be very realistic about this. We went, we'd print these at a higher speed mode, I mean, lower speed mode, higher quality mode, all right, print time on these balls for 108 balls would be eight minutes and 20 seconds for this entire bed. All right, again, being very conservative, saying that gives us a minute and 40 seconds to reload. What we would actually do, we'd have a second jig we would have loaded up 
As soon as this was done, pop it off, pop another jig onto here, all right? Hit print again, and with that, we're going to print it out easily. We're going to do that six times in an hour, all right? That comes out to six times 108, which is all day long, 648 balls. So we actually are going to slightly less than an hour if we wanted to do 600, but again, in all fairness to the pad printing people out there in this world, we're just going to say we printed 600 balls digitally in an hour. Now, again, we agreed. Or we're going to pay our, our operators. going to cost us $20 an hour. That's insurance taxes and all that. So we have $20 into the labor. And we did the math. Our RIP software actually calculates how much ink goes down, and this is going to blow you away. This tray of balls, all right, each ball, take cost 0.11 cents to print, all right? Basically a ninth of a penny to print. So to do 600 balls is 66 cents. 600 balls for 66 cents, $20 for labor. So again, being the generous guy I am, we're gonna call it 21 bucks, right? right? So we got $21 in labor and ink into it, all right? Cleanup is nothing, literally, when we're done. So the pad printing job to do 600 balls, which is, it seems like a large number for a lot of people. Two hours to do, $100 worth of labor and parts and, and consumables, all right? And we still haven't cleaned the machine up yet. The digital process, 66 cents worth of consumables, $20 worth of labor, call it $21. So we printed these, we did this an hour, faster, meaning that this machine was twice as productive for this type of work. All right, I'm not saying that there aren't situations where pad printing. If I wanted to do 100,000 golf balls with a one color logo in it, I'm smoking it with, with a pad printer all day long, all right? It's just a lot quicker and a lot simpler, and you rock and roll, and you etch the pad in one of the metal plates. But for large, small, large orders, I mean, that's a, 600 sounds like a large order to a lot of people you're gonna be able to go in and produce these half the amount of time as you would with a pad printer, all right? And at literally one-fifth the cost. That's crazy, all right? And if it was one color job when we were doing 600, you would have maybe looked at that, this, the time would have come down to about an hour and 20 minutes, let's say, on the pad printer, but you still would have had the excessive cost. Your, your, your cost would go down somewhat, but you're still, you still have to load the machine up with the ink. So you're going to be looking at more like $0.66 cents versus, say, $40, all right, uh, for everything. So plus, plus the 20 so say double the price. This is the way to go for a lot of jobs that have historically been pad or tampo printed. And it's certainly the way to be able to add full color to jobs you wouldn't do otherwise. And one thing that we forgot to mention We did these with variable data, all right, which is something that you're not going to be able to do with pad printing or temp printing. This, this job right here actually had nine dozen different names and positions on the golf balls, which if you would have done that in pad printing, <laughs> literally what you would have had to done, you would have had to set up a sixth plate that you would have dropped in the name and the position, and you would have had to change it out every dozen golf balls and get registration, ain't happening, right? So that's just not fair to do to the pad printing guys. That's it. This is the new generation of pad printing guys. This is digital pad printing. It's unlike just about any other digital process that we deal with in the apparel industry and things like that, where there are trade-offs, huge trade-offs of time versus saying, you know, we say you only want to do high color short runs, let's say for direct to garment and things like that. However, with this, because of all that's involved in setting up for pad printing, because of the excessive waste that goes into filling the ink cups with ink, right? This just buries it on the most moderate and up, up to really high number to run. I would, I would go so far as that we could probably done a 5,000 piece job here easily and still come out faster and come out cheaper with less work. So there's your little, uh, your, your little, your little gospel on the difference between pad printing and using a, a, a UV printer. And you're, by the way, you have similar situations when you get into larger items. Once you get above about four inches by four inches, 
pad printing goes out the window, and then you go into screen printing. And that goes only so far as well. The thing of beauty of having one of these is you're replacing two processes. You don't have to have screen printing equipment for your flat goods, your, you know, your, your, uh, your plaques, uh, any type of thing, even items that you're manufacturing, all right? You're able to do inside of here that you would traditionally screen print as well, you know, plastics and metals and whatnot. So that would be uh, wrapping it up here a little bit. This is the Compress IUV600S. Not really doing any printing today, but letting you see the kind of work you can do with this that historically has been done with more manual type of processes that are really starting to, to see their, their days slip away with something as small as this. This is, by the way, smaller than most six-color pad printers. I'm Don Coble with the Compress IUV printers.